Hello everybody, Jeffrey McAvoy here. Welcome to this uh, part one of two on how I replaced the clutch on a Land Rover Discovery 1 3.5 V8 that I just picked up recently. It's, um, it's a heavy procedure, I did it all by myself and so here's a two part video about um, pretty much how I did the thing. So um, to make things easier I built a uh, gearbox support bracket and um, yeah that helped me not to die in the process this is quite something different than just changing a clutch on uh, BMW or uh, you know anything else really because the uh, transfer box uh, is added to this and it adds considerable weight and volume and to add to the difficulty of it uh, the transfer box is offset so um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's something. It's not an afternoon job, to say the least. Now, first start by removing the drive shafts, front and rear. Uh, 916 nuts and bolts. Pretty easy. I did the whole set of the accessible ones first before even lifting the vehicle, uh, and then at some point just. Uh, very easily rotate the drum right there to access the other set of bolts if you catch my drift and um, and remove these obviously chock the wheels because you don't want to die in the process it, it, you know it's cool to, to be alive chock the wheels and then remove the remainder of the bolts and uh, off for the drive shafts pretty straightforward now the interior of this car, I'll let you guess what the profession of the previous owner of this car was. Uh, I had a good laugh when I took this all apart. Obviously now I um, uh, cleaned the, the complete interior while it was out. I even went to um, the extent of removing the entire dashboard from the car and uh, and cleaning completely and dip the uh, the air vents in the ultrasonic cleaner and so on and so forth I really went to great length to get rid of the um, I don't know greasy patina you could call it anyway uh, proceed to removing the rubber matting and the gear lever knobs just look at how how dirty all this is good uh, well it's Properly used second-hand example. Here's a quick view of the interior as it was when I bought it. Uh, God knows what kind of organic substance uh, have been lying around in this thing, but uh, now it's it's all clean. I'll make sure to uh, to show you some uh, some nice shots of it in a later video. In the meantime, remove the radio system if you have one and um, remove the center console it pretty much holds by a set of um, a set of screws which are very easily accessible now you can remove the center panel in this case it the tabs had already been broken apparently and uh, well here's another quick look on the inside don't forget that screw down there and this uh, Land Rover is equipped with an air brake system so it actually has a uh, a little compressor on the engine which uh, compresses air into a tank so it uh, sounds a bit like a truck at some some point it's uh, quite amusing remove the handbrake cable and I discovered later on obviously that it's easier to disconnect the connectors for the windows and so on and so forth and then just remove the center console now apparently somebody has been here before because there's some duct tape on there which um, which uh, probably isn't original and um, yeah I was devastated to see that the uh, the rubber gate right there is uh, is torn so somebody probably changed the um, the reverse light switch I suppose and instead of doing things properly just uh, cut through it with a cutter that asshole. anyway um, yeah, you just have to unscrew these two plates that secure the boot down. They hold by uh, by a set of three or four screws each, and remove that plate. See the the tear on there? It's ridiculous, but whatever. And so yeah, you have to drill out 
the uh, rivets, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, I think I used a 10 millimeter drill bit, I think, to go through them and then just um, pop the uh, the remaining bits of the rivets out with a uh, with a drift. Now remove these uh, top plates right there for the uh, the gear selectors. There's a little gasket there that you don't want to lose. I'll put the screws back on for safekeeping and uh, start disconnecting all the electricals. So you have uh, an electrical switch for the reverse light. There's one for the transfer box uh, locking light on the dashboard. Uh, one for the gearbox oil temperature and another one who does something else I believe uh, which I can't remember. Anyway, uh, remove the gear selectors. You'll find that it's quite a fiddle to get them off but it is necessary and uh, here's my take on uh, CAD which is a cardboard aided design so to speak. Smear a bit of oil where I want it and take the prints. This helped me to make a uh, gearbox support bracket. See that's uh, very highly sophisticated. You can see the bracket under construction right there. There's pieces of it but um, I first needed to remove the um, chassis brace which was um, which had sort of bonded to the chassis. I suppose it never was never taken off before. So um, here it goes. It's quite a heavy piece and the uh, the edges are sharp so be careful. And this is a little rod for the uh, air bleed valve for the brake system. See the tank in the bottom of the screen right there which is uh, filled with air. And remove the handbrake cable. and remove the connector, that's the fourth connector and the speedo drive cable. Before emptying the gearbox I uh, decided that it would be wise to open the filler plug because obviously uh, if you can't open it then you can't fill your gearbox back up. So I just wanted to make sure that um, it could be removed. Now I spent the best part of the end of yesterday um, going at it with uh, you know spanners and uh, uh, and Stilson wrench to absolutely no avail with pry bars and so on and so forth so this is what I came up with this is actually uh, my oil filter removal tool which has a, a half inch um, drive so I just um, since the the end of this uh, plug was not completely knackered but pretty much so um, this is the uh, you know last resort see so, uh, how, how to go and even this uh, 24 inch heavy duty Stilson um, didn't didn't, uh, didn't manage to get it so you know usually it does in this case it did, it didn't so um, where's my spanner prop my feet on the on the differential back there. Gotcha, you bastard. Yeah. Need to be resourceful in this line of business. Jesus Christ. Absolutely don't care if my tool stays stuck on this thing. It can stay there for life. I absolutely couldn't care less. My main concern is that the damn plug is off finally. Good grief. There you go. Good God, I don't know what kind of an tighten this thing. But uh, yeah, whatever. I think this is going to stay here for life pretty much. Good. Now I can proceed to emptying the gearbox. That was indeed quite an ordeal. Now removing the gearbox uh, drain plug was considerably easier. And for all you guys 
who still have doubts, it is most definitely ATF that goes into that gearbox. First of all, it says so in the uh, factory manual. And I had a quick chat about this on Facebook with, uh, with a dude who apparently knows it all and um, who was adamant on the fact that it's uh, regular transmission oil. Well, it's not, mate. It's uh, ATF. There you go. Here's a proof. So, um, yeah. This one uh, comes with a gearbox oil cooler. Uh, goes to the front obviously so that uh, tubing has to be removed as well which is fairly easy it's qu uh, quite accessible but you do have to remove it if you want to remove the gearbox so um, don't forget to um, to do that as well obviously it hasn't moved since ages so it's going to be a bit of a hassle make sure that everything's clean and blank the hole off to make sure that no dirt can go inside remove the clutch slave cylinder and that front uh, blanking plate which um, which usually is over tightened. Now here's also proof that you can actually get the uh, top gearbox bolts out without having to cut into the body. I've seen a very unprofessional video on YouTube of, um, with these lads just um, cutting away at the Land Rover to get uh, access to these bolts. So you don't have to do that. Here's a quick view of the, uh, of the setup uh, of the bracket that I made. Took me an afternoon, but I'm glad I did. So now that the gearbox is supported by the jacks and uh, all the weight is relieved onto the jacks, you can remove the, um, the gearbox support brackets off the frame and start lowering the gearbox. Now I left these on because it uh, keeps the gearbox straight. Now at this point I decided not to remove the gearbox entirely because it's such a hassle, it's uh, heavy business and I'm all alone to do this so uh, I thought I wouldn't take any risks to remove it from the car and have difficulties putting it back in. So the thing is you have to lower it sufficiently so that the uh, brake drum at the rear can clear the, the, uh, the body and then just uh, gently pull the gearbox rearwards and that's pretty much it. Now, um, yeah, the gearbox mounts uh, were left intentionally and I put a axle stand under the engine just in case because the uh, engine mounts are completely rotten so I was afraid to have a V8 fall on my face. So um, I put that just in case. Now with a, uh, with a bar, which is actually a, a steering rod from a Defender, believe it or not, managed to push the gearbox back sufficiently without having to mess around with the jack. And here's my, uh, my little handy mate right there keeping everything stable, I guess, and uh, making sure that I don't die. And lower it some more. There you go to clear the... Uh, the handbrake mechanism and that's pretty much it so I'll catch you all in part two where I remove the old clutch and uh, replace it with a new one using a technique that does not involve a clutch centering tool so I hope you'll find that interesting thank you so very much for watching make sure you drop a like leave a comment and I'll catch you all in the next video